Hello guys, it's Sonic here, and welcome back to what I believe is episode 6 of my Kingdom of Eurasia playthrough series. So guys, we're getting right off from where we left in episode 5. One thing I've noticed though, is look, our authority has gone from plus 4 per turn back up to plus 5, and that is thanks to the plus 1 from the Golden Guard. So I'm not actually sure we would have had that increased if we'd invested in the Intelligence Service. So getting the Golden Guard authority... Uh, increase is amazing um because yeah you can have all the money in the world but if you don't actually have the authority to spend the, the money or the energy it's actually quite useless so getting that authority up in turn for spending three budget is very very good so family visit to isa which we have now got the golden guard investigating here with 24 officers so that might play into how this event goes here but anyway after months of promises and scheduled conflicts Vina and I were finally on our way to visit my cousin, Raiko Taurus, at his palace in Isa. The city's main road was straight and impossibly wide, a relic of Markian times when the city was a major trading centre. I waved out the car window to the crowds of citizens aligning the road, up ahead in the doomed library of the university. I noticed most of the people who'd come out to see us were native region, even on the, city, the streets of the city's Weser quarter, little Rekalawitz. Why can't I believe say that? Rakalowitz. I can't. Oh, freaking hell, guys. <laughs> we passed a street cleaner who was rapidly trying to scrub graffiti off the side of a building. Could just make out the remnants. They read, House Taurus will fall. Vina didn't seem to notice. He looked lost in thought. You guys meeting us here too, right? Why do you think they wanted us here so badly? Hmm. Yeah. I suspect the Golden Gun investigation I ordered will be the main topic of discussion. I can't even remember the last time Cousin Rico and I probably spoke. When we were children, maybe? We rode on until we reached Palace Sazon. Under Rico's stewardship, a formidable-looking iron gate had been constructed around the otherwise tranquil palace complex. The security led us through to the Duke's residence, a blindingly white building with the flags of Risha and House Taurus hanging from every window. We walked up to the doors. As soon as the guards opened, then a pair of long-nosed Risian hunting dogs raced towards us, barking. Go away, I hate dogs. The dogs. I reached out and carefully gave each dog a pat on the head. Wow, he looks older than I was expecting. I was expecting him to be like quite a young guy, maybe like 19 or something. But he looks about like 45. <laughs> Never mind. Bella, Bruno, sit. Both dogs promptly sat at attention, still as statues. I heard the sound of boots on tile as my cousin Rico approached. He was wearing an olive green tween jacket and a flat cap. He gave me a quick bow of acknowledgement, then knelt and kissed Vina's hand. I was struck by his transformation from a gawky, insecure teen to a broad-shouldered, preternaturally confident young man. There is evil goodness. These games always help me with my bloody English, that's for sure. Well, could my cousins, it's been far too long. Oh, it has, Rico. You're looking sporty. Father, not tell you? We're going hunting. Wait, what? Hugo appeared from behind his son, a sheepish look on his face. Your first hunt is a king. I wanted it to be a surprise. Hmm. Yeah. Welcome surprise indeed. It's been ages since I shot something. Well, wow. you'll be glad to know the technology has greatly improved since then. He turned around and showed us the KA-74 semi-automatic rifle strapped to his back. What the fuck? Who the fuck goes hunting with an AK-47? That sounds like a recipe for disaster. And also really bad. Like, I suppose if you sneak up on a, like a deer or whatever, you can get an accurate shot off. But like, that thing, I don't know. I'm no weapons expert, but Jesus Christ. Isn't that cheating? I was a speedy bastard. You'd be surprised, your highness. Smiled rackishly at my daughter. We've out of it prepared for the two of you, and your choice of weapons, of course. I'll have a good old-fashioned rifle, I don't want any bloody AK-47. He goes smirk to his son. You see, boy, there are still real gentlemen in this world. I do you wish I'd known about these plans? I've never so much as held a gun before. Come now, I'll teach you. It'll be great fun. Inside, Vina and I quickly refreshed ourselves and changed into the hunting garb that had been laid out for us. We stepped out to find two waiting jeeps. Pride with Duke Rico. I have much to discuss with him. Rico nodded. An aide held the door open, and we hopped into the first car. East of the palace, the landscape quickly turned hilly and green. We were entering the Brenner's Forest estate, a private hunting ground reserved for nobility only. I turned away from the window to see Rico looking at me intently. I must already know what I'm about to say, your, your Majesty. 
He refused to denounce Suomina in the face of pressure from Wellen. For that, we, th th they are grateful. But then I got wind of your investigation. Tell me, cousin, do you really think I keep company with terrorists? Oh, sorry. I forgot Rico's my cousin, of course. He's going to be the same age as me. Why did I imagine him to be like 19? God, I'm an idiot. Whatever. Um, hmm. I don't want to go straight guns blazing with him because it will just relay back to Hugo anyway, so I'm not going to go to number four. No, I'm, no, I don't. Assuming you're innocent, the investigation will clear your name. Trust me, nobody I know has a clue was behind the Zilli attack. A light smirk formed on his face. But I can't say I wasn't happy to see those Wessex get what was coming to them. But to believe your organisation is completely innocent? In Wellen? Yes. Your investigation into us will turn up nothing. But if you want this mess cleared up in time for Zilli to be returned, I think I can help you. In his throat. People in my organisation are loyal to me, your majesty. Very loyal. If one of two of them were to confess to the attack, and a splinter cell acting independently of both Suomina and the Crown, it'll solve both of our problems. Hmm. Wellen's investigators aren't stupid. They didn't cover the truth. The truth is that Wellen itself was behind the attack. My hunch is they're counting on Regents to deny that crime so they can postpone the Zillay handover. By handing over my men, we'd be calling their bluff. It is. I do agree with them, actually. I 100% I believe it is well in behind the attack on their own people. And I think by calling their bluff, they will have to hand over the the city. Uh, sorry, the, the, the land. Because it's like, well, they're relying on the fact that we can't put a blame. So they're blaming Sormana. But if Sormana come forward and say, oh, well, it was independent terrorist or whatever, then we've handled the situation. So Zile is now safe again. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do it number three. And the fact that this would put a premature end to my investigation to Suomina, a nice little bonus for you, I presume. And you as well. Don't forget that we're related. Hmm. I, d I don't agree with him. I'd rather get to the truth. I'm a man of justice, and I I, I personally want to keep that this way for the say. I want to be a just king. I might be a little assertive here and there. And after, you know, put money... From one place to another, here or there. But again, I, I wanna, I wanna be just. I'm gonna go with number one. I uh, understood, Your Majesty. Carry on with your forget investigation. I forgot I said anything. It wasn't about. To be honest, though, with, to be fair to him, that was actually quite a good one. I was, I was considering what he said there, but but alas, let's keep, let's keep moving on. Rico looked away for a moment. The woods around us were growing denser. Hmm. If there's anything else you'd like to bring up with your king? Now is the time. Rico eagerly turned back towards me. I'm sure you've been kept abreast of the situation here, your majesty. The drugs, the violence, the open resistance against our government. Hmm. Seem that bad to me. It's concerning indeed. What can I do to help? I'm glad you asked. I've heard that in, in times of emergency, police from the region's central force can be placed under individual leaders' direct command. I petitioned your war and security counsellor for just such a transfer, but she refused. Hmm. Rightly so. You should be cooperating with the greater province of Brennus. You mean with the Sazons? He snorted. They can't be counted on to cooperate. If anything, they're actively plotting against us. I'll send you the, the, the petition when we were both back home. I trust you'll do what's best for our city. We pulled off the road and continued some distance on a dirt path that wound through the pines. We came to a halt at the mouth of a grassy clearing with gently sloping sides. Hunting blinds lined its perimeter. In my youth, you and I had nicknamed it the Soup Tureen. At last! Enough politics talk. We disembarked and Raiko eagerly un uh, unlatched the back of our jeep. Bella and Bruno hops out and started sniffing the air. Caught the scent already, my dears. Must be a dozen of must be a dozen boars out there. The other cars pulled up next to us. Hugo and Vina got out, still in conversation. So as you see, your highness, knowing how to aim and fire a gun correctly is as useful as a raw skill as knowing how to hold a salad fork. Bet it, Hugo. You'll make a hundred out of my daughter yet. Their instincts, she'll be the finest shot this kingdom ever saw. He waved his son over. But I've bored you enough, your highness. I believe Raiko is going to show you the ropes. I'd be delighted to, if the king permits. He extended his hand to my daughter. Actually, I was hoping I could escort. Oh, th there's definitely some bubbling of romance here, and I'm not sure if it's mainly coming from this Raiko or Venus feeling it as well, but I am worried that Hugo is going to use that as like a political point to capture the, the influence, so it is a bit worrying. 
Um, it's not my decision. Do you want to go with him, Vina? I'm going to go with that. That, that. that keeps up to her. Yes, I'd love to. We didn't even get a chance to speak at the coronation. Vina took Raiko's hand. With a smile, he picked up their guns and walked her over to one of the blinds. Dogs in tow. Hugo shrugged. The two of us it is, your majesty. An assistant handed me my rifle. It was a region-made Dator 56, similar to the one I'd used during my summers hunting with Hugo. So my aim for quantity, but men like us know quality is key. He locked and loaded his own Dator rifle. Its stock had a gold embossed bull on it. We climbed up into the hunting blind opposite of Vina and Raiko's position. And now we play the waiting game. There was a long stretch of silence, punctuated only by the chirping of birds and the occasional bark of Bella and Bruno in the distance. I may not like Raiko's hunting methods, but his dogs are second to none, so drive the boars out in no time. Hmm. While he's so keen that he and Vina go off together, he calmly adjusted his rifle's sight. If my son and your daughter are to be married, they ought to spend some time together first. Oh my goodness me. Or if he's seriously never considered the possibility. Oh my gosh. What? No, they're cousins. Shockingly enough, the thought never crossed my mind. That is indeed shocking, your majesty. As you know, there are interests both inside and outside this country who seek to snatch Regia away from House Taurus. Consanguinity, consanguinity wouldn't be my first choice either, but it's the only way to keep our family in power. Hmm. The right alliances make us more powerful than blood alone. But the wrong ones will doom us into history's dustbin. As your uncle and your advisor, this is my advice. You may, you may follow or disregard it as you choose. Just then, we heard a rustling sound coming from the woods. Bella and Bruno had found their quarry. A group of boars raced into the clearing, the dogs nipping at their heels. Working in tandem, they forced their prey into the lowest part of the glade. Looking through my gun sight, I fixed my crosshairs on the group. Hmm, misintentionally, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot a boar. I took aim and pulled the trigger. My first shot managed to hit the largest boar. I fired again and hit another. Well done! As I turned away to reload, I heard a series of rapid fire bangs coming from Raiko's direction. I looked back out of the blind to see the ground littered with dead boars. Hmph. <laughs> Very sporting if you ask me. By the end of the hunt, I dragged up six kills. Hugo had four, and Raiko had a dozen. He and my daughter were deep in conversation as they climbed down from their blind. Lies are this, lies are that. I'm telling you, if well and civil war happened while Grandmother was still in power, she wouldn't have set out the welcome mat. No. Liza would have honoured Risha and Wellen's long history of cooperation and shown compassion for those who suffered. Naive little girl. Everyone in Macopa wants what we regions have. The Wessex saw a chance to get it, and they jumped on it. He flung his gun on the ground in frustration. I'm afraid your daughter didn't shoot a damn thing on today's hunt, your majesty. She was too busy distracting me with her nonsense opinions. Oh, I think one, one's a little bit straight up, isn't it? But it's sort of what I, get, what I want to go for. Yeah, one is a little bit, like, too much. I'm not going to go with number three. I'm just going to go with number two. He seemed to collect himself for a moment, then smirked. Thank you. You didn't make out too poorly yourself. Post her photographs next to the boars we'd killed. The assistants began packing everything away. We'll eat well tonight. The chef at Palace Sazon does an ex excellent braised boar with wine sauce. Raiko, Vina, why don't you two ride ahead and notify the kitchen staff? His Majesty and I will be right behind you. Peter gave me a pleading look. Hmm. Why don't you go with your son, Hugo? I'll accompany the princess. Hugo raised an eyebrow. As you wish. Come along, Raiko. Vida silently thanked me as Raiko and Hugo departed. We climbed into the second jeep and headed back to the palace. You know, that night was indeed delicious. Yeah, so the whole idea of Raiko marrying... Um, Vina, I honestly didn't even think about, like, I understand it's a possibility, but it didn't even cross my mind, just, just as I said in the game. Um, and it's definitely not something in a million years I want to happen. Not only does that secure Hugo and Raiko a bit too much power, in my opinion, and control over me, but it's also just such a waste of a diplomatic event. Getting a marriage with Pelé to secure that as territory, getting a marriage with Rumberg, even though it's not what I had in mind, that's way better than getting one with bloody Raiko. What a, what a waste of space. Uh, anyway, let's let's keep moving on. We've got the Regia Imperi Business Women's Association Highlights Gender Pay Gap. Okay, so that's some uh, welfare stuff there. 
Magic Contana's SSS monitors. Monitors, geopolitical cow office. Okay. okay, we've got two events here. We're all visiting the Scarlet Kingbird Festival. Oh, why is a police transfer? No, nah, we, we're not going to... We're going to deny the police transfer. Hugo and Raikou are going to be right on my case throughout this whole playthrough because a lot of the stuff I'm doing is against them. But hey, I don't like him. I don't like him one bit, so... We're going to have to fight him either way, in my opinion. Every spring, the seaside town of Salome celebrated the Scarlet Kingbird Festival. The vibrantly coloured songbirds spent their winters in Gina to the southern part of what used to be the Mosul Empire. Every spring, like clockwork, they flew back over the Gulf of Mordia to settle in the Salabas. Their return was celebrated with music, dancing and lavish banquets, opened by a speech from the reigning Duke of Salabas. It was traditional for the King of Regia and his family to attend. The sun hung low in the sky over the arena of Salabas, a hundred-year-old open-air venue perched directly on the beach. Vina and I sat waiting in the roll box as cameras flashed in our direction. My daughter impatiently tapped her fingers on the arm of her chair. We hadn't spoken much since Isa. Hmm. Are you corresponding with Raiko these days? What? No. I was about ready to murder him after the Isa trip. Fanfare sounded from the pit orchestra, and an announcer stepped behind the podium. This year, he said the speech would be given not by the Duke of Salabas, but by the heir of House Sazon. The audience roared as Manus Sazon got on stage. Oh gosh, I forgot about this guy. This was no longer the nervous young man I'd met in Port Drazon. He radiated confidence as he stepped up to the podium. Greetings, Salabin. Salabin, what a, what a thing. He waited for the audience applause to subside, then held up a hand for the audience to listen. The entire arena fell silent. The story of Scarlet Kingbird is a story about trust. Every year, this tiny feathered creature travels thousands of kilometers to reach our shores. He doesn't know what perils await him on the way to his destination, nor what sort of welcome will await him there. Yet he flies on, because something deep within his soul compels him to do so, and in a voice that tells him, this is your home. Jesus Christ. He's talking about himself. Shh. He glared at me, then turned her full attention back to the man of stage. Yeah, she- I reckon where the story is going is, the game will set me up that Vina desperately wants to marry this guy because he, he was, um, he was like iron, or oh, Vina was eyeing him up like back of the episode one or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna go right against her and say she can't marry this douche. Uh, well, douche in the King of Regis' eyes, anyway. And what of those who wait for him? They have no idea where he's been or how, or how he knows to navigate to this exact same spot each time. So they gather here, scanning the skies for this first sign of his return. As if on cue, a solitary bird came flying towards us from over the horizon. The image was bright red. A tear rolled down Manus' cheek. Trust. It's the only way of this works. Even then, we've been given no reason. Even when our faith is tested, over and over. A second bird followed, then a third. It's only when we place our trust in one another that we are able to find our way. The audience gasped as the sky over our heads filled with hundreds and hundreds of kingbirds, their crimson feathers magnificently lit by the setting sun. Hmm. Keep your head down, Vina. Too much trust will get you a face full of shit. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's brilliant. Um, time of the speech period of the migration. What a cheap trick. <laughs> I'm just going gonna, gonna to try and shit on this guy every opportunity. I don't see anything cheap about it. Vina sniffled. She had tears in, her, tears in her eyes as well. Once the sun had set and the birds had gone to roost, we made our way to the VIP reception in the neighbouring pavilion. A big band was playing jazz music as Vina and I entered. We immediately found ourselves surrounded by local officials, celebrities and members of the press. Nearly an hour before I was able to sit down, almost as soon as I parked myself in a chair, I noticed Manus Sazon making his way over to me. Hmm... Not in the mood to dance, Mr. Sass. <laughs> Manus smiled uncomfortably. I'm better off on the debate floor than the dance floor, your majesty. Actually, I've been hoping to speak with you, with you for a long time. Hmm. To be honest, I've been avoiding you. Hmm. So why didn't you request an audience with me? He gave me a look that was equal parts hurt and puzzled. I did. You're a grand vizier. The message must have gotten lost. But since we're both here right now, your majesty, I know what you and your family think of me, and I know that my position in government is symbolic at best. I still think we have a chance to accomplish great things for this country. You have some nerve even approaching me after what your father did. I don't expect you to forgive Lucas Sazon. I haven't given him myself. 
I used to hate him for robbing me of my birthright. Now I realise his real crime was robbing Rija of the peaceful transition it deserved. The remaining Sazons and I are in agreement. Our citizens need not shed blood to be granted a voice. Peaceful transition to what? Man has traced the rim of his wine glass with his finger. Rija already has the framework in place to become a true constitu constitutional monarchy, a place where citizens have a greater say in the lawmaking process, but the royals keep their status and influence. I know I'm taking a, a risk by suggesting this to you, but I believe that unless a change is made, we may face another uprising. The hell? Another uprising? Where's this guy? Are you trying to threaten me, boy? Hmm. Second uprising will not happen during my reign. I do not doubt the strength of your regime, your majesty. But the commoners are tired of a ruling class that places its own desires above their own. Hmm. Hmm. And I suppose your solution is that would be must make yourself Prime Minister. I promise you, this is not about what I want. It's about the securing the stability of the kingdom. Hmm. Try to disguise your power grab as altruism, Mr. Sazon. I can see right through you. It's not. A look of frustration, frustration spread across his face. He took a handkerchief out of his pocket and dabbed his brow. Obviously Chong the, chose the wrong venue for this conversation. Hmm. No, please go on. What are you, what are you going to tell me? Nothing. He stood up and pushed back his chair. If you'll excuse me, your majesty, I'm going to refresh my drink. He turned around to head to the bar and came face to face with Vina, who was returning to our table. Her face was slightly flushed. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Sazon. Nothing to excuse, your highness. I hope you're enjoying your time in Celebes. I was just speaking to the bartender. He's still trying to get the rest of his family out of Derdia. I told him I'd see what I could do. Manus smiled warmly. That's very noble of you. But there are thousands like him, and not all of them are lucky enough to catch the Princess of Rijra at a benevolent moment. <laughs> Forgive me, Mr. Sazon, but the Princess and I really have to get going. Vina ignored my remark. Whoa, your speech was beautiful, Mrs. Sazon. Actually, it reminded me of an essay of Queen Liza from 1883. On social contracts. Yes, that one was an inspiration. What were the others? The began, the, the began? <laughs> the band began playing Sweetheart of Ventry City, an upbeat tune that had recently reached us from Arcasia. You know what? Tell me after this dance. Oh, come on, what a joke. What a sick joke. She took a step closer towards Manus and extended a hand to him. He looked at me questioningly. Over my dead body. Mm. Over my dead body. I'm going to be like, I <laughs> decided. I like the idea of just like ripping this guy to shreds. Over my dead body. Vina fixed me with an indignant stare. We guests here, father. You'll look bad if you leave without engaging with our hosts. I've engaged with our host enough. We're going now. Vina let out an exasperated sigh. I do apologise, Mr. Zazon. It's been lovely to spend time in your family's province. Pleasure has been all mine. He took Vina's hand and pressed it to his lips. Oh, gosh. Until next time, Your Highness, Your Majesty. I saw a sneaker look back at him as we left the ballroom. It was a look I knew well. I seen it in our mother's eyes on the day we first met. God damn it. What impin whelp am I gonna have to deal with here? No! Right, guys, this is this is bad. I'm gonna have to employ emergency measures to execute this guy on the side like that. Um, what it means is I'm just gonna have to fall out with my daughter in the long run to, to, to marry her off to some some powerful king in some faraway land. So yeah, that's gonna be fun to deal with, but we won't deal with that just yet. Will we? We've got two more events. Golcon to this pilgrims demand access at Morella border. So I don't the girl Condis Pilgrim's passage request. Um, oh, this was to do with, yeah, from Dirty and Morella, those two countries to the west. Um, and I'm pretty sure one was the girl Condis and the other hated them. Um, yeah. Could boost global image of bastion of tolerance and compassion. However, these groups may intend to visit holy sites that are currently restricted. I'm going to reject because, again, like, we, like I say, we've already restricted those, you know, those holy sites. So it'll be a bit... Unfair if we then, you know, allow these people in. So I'm going to reject them. Which is a shame, but, you know, got to stick to, stick to the rules. Morella condemns Regia's border policy. Region oil and gas continue assessment in the new gas field. Oh, this is the one, the Palasian area over there. Oh, that is going to cause some tensions, isn't it? Then, we're here, meeting with Mus uh, Musty. <laughs> 
probably smells a bit messy, doesn't he? But Rusty Montoro. Palace Presna. Let's go. On the banks of Zapana River in Br uh, Bronos, so the Palace Verana. Almost as opulent as my own palace. It had once served as the summer residence of my ancestors, the Rubers family. Today, it was the home of Rosello Rusty Montoro, the CEO of Region Royal Gold and the wealthiest commoner in the country. I stepped out onto the deck of the region, uh, Reginia as the yacht approached the palace's private dock. Hugo and Eleanor were already there, gazing out at the grounds. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Palace Ferrana without its water garden is no palace at all. I think it's an improvement myself, but what do you make of this, your majesty? I looked in the direction she was indicating. The water garden, once a tranquil oasis filled with blossoming flowers and gently burbling fountains, had been replaced with a gigantic gold tile swimming pool. Oh, that's horrendous. Hideous. I hate new money. I agree with that. That, that is a, a lovely water garden being replaced with a golden swimming pool. That is disgusting. I'd be surprised if Mr. Montoro even used it. Suddenly, a group of armed men exited the palace in single file. They positioned themselves at equal intervals around the dock. They followed us with their eyes as we disembarked and walked towards the palace veranda. As I passed, the largest guard, I noticed he was wearing a badge that read Palantor Security Solutions. Hmm, an Arcasian security company? That's a bit... You insult, you insolent lowlife, I love that. Palantor, are you Arcasian? He said at me with a look of non-comprehension. Rusty rose from where he'd been sitting and rushed over to us. Anton, there's no way to treat your- <laughs> Antoine, Antoine, that's no way to treat our royal visitors. The guard reluctantly bowed to me. Rusty ushered us past him and showed us to a set of chairs. The gold magnate's red hair was streaked with grey. With grey? Oh my fucking god, I can't speak, guys. Streaked with grey, but his eyes had a youthful mischief about them. On behalf of all of us at the esteemed Region Royal Gold Corporation, I do hereby extend my cordial greetings. He trolled off with a grim. Heck, I was never one for formalities. Welcome to my palace, your majesty. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Montoro. You certainly have made it yours, haven't you? Oh, the pool? I can't stand swimming myself. Get sunburned at the drop of a hat. The grandkids love it, though. He turns to Hugo and Eleanor. Your Grace, Madam Treasurer, I haven't had to sit down with you two since the last man wore the crown. My uncle gritted his teeth. You mean my honourable brother, His Majesty Valero. May he rest in peace. Now, Hugo, Rusty. Uh, now, Hugo, Rusty paid his respect at the funeral like everyone else. He shook Rusty's hand. He beckoned for us to sit as butlers. He beckoned for us to sit as his butlers brought over water and fresh fruit. So, how's business? We'll get to that, your majesty. Sit her down, have a drink first. A shame her highness couldn't make it. Has she finally found her bow back home in the capital? Well, thank you not- Well, we'll thank you not to speculate about Princess Vina's romantic prospects. Hmm. Greed. We're keeping the topic of my daughter's love life within the family. Oh shit, I didn't mean to say that. No, that is the complete opposite of what I'm doing. Christ. Well, all right. I'll cut to the chase then. He sat back and unbuttoned the top of- Button of his shirt. You know there'll be no region without region royal gold. Hmm. So the partnership between your company and the monarchy has benefited us both equally. Sure, your majesty. My point being, it's fair to say that what concerns me concerns this country. And right now, what concerns me is this. He picked up a piece of paper from the table next to him. It was a flyer with a few sentences written in both region and Wesik. Supervisors at mines are picking up hints that the workers are holding after our meetings on the subject of unsafe conditions. The first step to unionizing? Don't know if I'd go that far, but meeting workers' demands is like feeding zoo animals. The more you give them, the hungrier they get. Have there been any incidents lately? Anything that might have triggered this? Rusty snorted. Actions have been part of the job since the dawn of time. You should say they weren't a real miner until you were missing a finger. Jesus Christ. Do you ever work yourself in the mine? Do you ever work in the mine yourself, Rusty? Not extensively, but I've swung a pickaxe or two in my day. Hugo cleared his throat. Do you have a request of His Majesty, Mr. Montoro? Or have you merely invited us here to complain? Not complain? Warn! I'm not going to change a thing about the way my mines operate, so sooner or later, it's going to land in your lap. RRG's values have been going down since we lost Zillay. New safety regulations might sound fine and dandy, but they'd be a death blow to our bottom line. How much revenue would we stand to lose? Hard to say. Implementing the regulations themselves will cost a pretty penny. 
and what you think will happen if we pass the cost on to our trading partner. So hit the roads faster than my first ex-wife, <laughs> and raise her eyebrows. We've been seeing more global competition on the gold market, unfortunately. But for now, our product is of high enough quality that Rumbug is willing to pay for it. Yes, but if the price rises further still, I'd rather not admit it, admit it but Mr. Montoro may have a point. Hmm. We serve the Meftium International Trade Zone, don't we? Well, that's the other thing. I'm sure you'll know about Alma Sultana, who is the Republic of Marilla. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. A Malianist, a dangerous figure. That's right, your majesty. Woman's never picked up a chisel in her life, and she suddenly knows how to run the mitts. <coughs> <coughs> she started calling for regulation over there as well, or worse, nationalization. Marilla doesn't even have a unilateral power over the international trade zone. Risha, Lesbia, and Vogsland all have a say. And guess which one of those Miss Sultana has been cozying up to on this subject? If she and Hegel get their way, Rishi will either lose his mining rights or our boys will have to pray to Malinyev before going back to work every morning. Hmm. No matter what, our revenue from the region takes a hit. And the CSP will claim another victory. The political aspect isn't as concerning to me as the loss of access to our most important mines. We have to keep a close eye on this. Hmm. Your comedy will, will rebound when we get Zile back. I sure hope that's in the cards, your majesty. That little nub of land is home to some of the fattest gold veins in my company's ever found. No way Welling could mine it all in 25 years. You're saying that RRG's mining operations in the region could pick up where they left off? Yes, ma'am. Assuming we get it back without making too much of a mess. Aren't most of, the, uh, aren't most of your miners labor hands from foreign countries? Do the regulations even apply to them? They're fixing it to have it that way, yes. The folks pushing for these restrictions, I mean <laughs> regulations, are a mix of labour hands and honest to goodness and honest to goodness regions, with some support from the Cezans to boot. I see what they're going for, I really do, but giving them everything they want would damn near bankrupt me. A little extreme, don't you think? I agree we shouldn't impose more regulations than necessary, but investing in safer and healthier employees could lead to profit in the long run. Foreigners included. Rossi took a bite out of the watermelon and slice, he wiped the juice off his chin. You know me, I don't mince words. I think you already realise that it's a, in both of our interests for you to back me up in this squabble. But hey, I'll sweeten the deal. Keep your administration's nose out of RRG's business, and I'll sell you back the share I took from your father. Elena pushed her chair back and stood up. I'm going to excuse, uh, recuse myself from this conversation. Where is the ladies' room? Just inside. If you've never sat on a solid gold toilet, you're in for a treat. She forced a smile as a butler escorted her out. Hugo, Rusty, and I glance at each other. He's trying to bribe the government, Mr. Montoro. A wing to sell us back 15% of RRG just for refusing to pass the regulations? Why not? It's about time we put Royal back in RRG partially, anyway. Mm, oh gosh, this is where it's setting me. I've made it quite clear I want what's best for Risha, not necessarily the people living in Risha, but this is like a verge you've got absolute. Not corruption, because we're the king, we can sort of do whatever the pissing hell we want. But it is like, oh gosh. I don't know. Um I'm gonna go I'm gonna go for number four. <laughs> You're a man after my own heart, Rusty. I think we're gonna work together very well. I sure hope so, your majesty. I won't keep wasting your time. Do we have a deal or don't we? Yeah. I accept. I'll make sure no new regulations pass on mining. I do like the kingdom altar at stake in RRG. I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> Oh god, Rusty smiled. Perfect. This could be the beginning of something beautiful. Alan stepped back into the room. That was colder than I expected. Are you gentlemen finished? Hugo practically sprang from his seat. It's been a delight, truly, but we must be headed back to Port Drazon. And here I was about to ask you to stay for lunch. So soon, your majesty? Don't worry, you'll be hearing from me. How if you hear from me first, eh, your majesty? Goodbye, Mr. Montoro. I could see him cheerfully waving from the uh, veranda as Hugo, Eleanor, and I stepped back on the uh, on board the yacht. Yeah, that that is um, that one might come to bite me back in the ass because maybe we'll get like a full on Malinevist uprising because they'll be striking due to you know workers' rights and all that sort of good stuff. But if we can get back more control of our gold. That means more money for us to then get uh, you know more factories set up, better 
And then also we can reinvest it in other welfare parts. So yeah, we might not have the workers' regulations, but we might provide better housing or whatever. So it, it's taking here, but providing there. That's what I mean about being just. But that's not being just, and I'm just taking bribes. But hey, I'm the king. What are they going to do? Vote me out? So Zona Air gives speech about trust. But can he be trusted? Oh my gosh. Okay, signals joining non-aligned movement. Surveying near completion on potentially massive new gas field in West Antation. This is the one, yeah, near the Grand Duchy of Palais. President Walker boosts welfare. This is economic challenge. Brilliant stuff, guys. Then got here... The Royal Visit to Mon Monteclar. My goodness, we're doing a full-on like trip around all the states, but let's let's head off. From anywhere in the city of Monteclar, you could look high into the hills and see ruins of Fortress of Zara. Planted and fortified over the centuries, it had served as a stronghold for the city's inhabitants from the early years of the Resonant Empire until its destruction in the War of Recent Succession. Today, the ruins served as a symbol of Monteclar's resilience and that of its governing house. Perhaps that was why Lucita had invited me here for a tour and a private talk. For safety's sake, a wooden walkway had been constructed over the crumbling remains of the parapets. Lucita and I walked along it until we came to the northwestern corner. How do you like the view, Your Majesty? From here, we could look down into the valley, where the provincial capital sprawled across the fast-flowing Alka River and up into the foothills of the mountain opposite us. Spectacular. Why did you bring me here, Duchess Cesaro? One, it's been too long since you visited this province. My constituents were starting to wonder if their king still cared about them. The fortress was closed off for our visit, but a crowd had gathered just outside its walls. We waved down to them and turned away, following the, walk the walkway towards the former armory. Our aides and guards stayed a respectable distance behind. Even the Markians could destroy this place, you know. Only when Regia's noble families turned against each other did it finally fall. He paused and turned to face me. It took years for the Zara and Taurus families to repair their bond. I hope our houses will remain har harmonious through your reign. Yeah, nothing means more to me than keeping the favour of House Azara. It's great to hear you say that. Your father and mine were close, Your Majesty. General Taddeus told me that he felt free to express his true opinion to the king with no fear of repercussion. Lucita bit her lip. She seemed uncharacteristically nervous. I'd like it if you and I had a similar relationship. Oh my lord! Deez. Um, what makes you think that you deserve that? Oh gosh. Yeah, number one is the perfect option, yeah. Perfect, your majesty. Thank you. She was smiling, but I read it a slight disappointment in her eyes. I'd like to get you to know you better. Tell me about yourself. About myself? You need to be searching for words. That depends, your majesty. What would you like to know? See, do you have any hobbies? <laughs> Whoa, why are you married? <laughs> That's such a stupid option to go for. Uh, she grimaced. They had a match chosen for me, of course. My father allowed me to break off the engagement when I joined the military. By the time I got out, I was considered too old to be of use in the marriage arena. Wow, that's pretty brutal. Hmm. Who's going to carry on the Azara legacy then? He looked away. My younger sister is poised to bring us an heir sooner or later. If not her, then surely one of our cousins. Do you have any questions of a less intimate nature? Why did you follow in Azara's family's footsteps? You could have chosen your own path in life. A path was chosen for me after my uncle was killed in the uprising. Even as a young girl, I knew that marked a turning point. My noble blood didn't make me safe anymore. Number two rings true, I feel. The royal threat isn't from the commoners, it's from the foreign powers who wish to destroy our way of life. Whatever the source of the threat, it pays to be prepared for it, as a kingdom and as an individual. I joined the military so I'd never get caught by surprise like that again. Let's see, do you have any hobbies? I've always enjoyed archery, or I've had the time for it. And my father and I used to play chess together. We still do when he has lucid moments. Maybe you and I could play someday. <laughs> She gave me a taunting look. If you're prepared to lose, Your Majesty. That's what I wanted to know. I hope your curiosity, curiosity has been satisfied. While you're at it, is there anything you want to know about me? Now that you mention it, she looked me in the eye. Turn about is fair play, Your Majesty. Why aren't you married? Oh my god! What the hell? Hmm. I'm so lucky for a woman who can handle it. Hmm. That's a highly inappropriate question. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I think number three is fully true. Romance isn't easy as a royal. You can never tell who truly loves you and who's just grasping for wealth and power. 
I understand completely. That's why it's safest for us nobles to marry amongst each other. She and I looked at each other for a long moment. I should move on to what I wanted to say. My house and I had questions regarding your recent meeting in Salabas. Sources say you were quite deep in conversation with the house as on air. Did those sources fail to tell you I turned them away? I had that impression, but I wanted to hear it from you. You know that the entire house is still suspected to have ties to Arcasia. Well, better Arcasia than United Contana. Oh, I'm not discounting the threat of United Contana. But they don't have the tentacles in the region ability yet. Thank you for your advice. Perhaps I'll re reacquire or acquire your assistance with this in the future. I'm just looking out for national security, as is my job. We'd come to a small grassy patch in the shade of the fortress southern wall. Lucy suggested for me to sit down. I had one more thing I wanted to bring up while we were alone. When I took over my father's position on the Royal Council, he gave me a trove of his old files. Watched between standard purchase orders and internal security and internal security reports, I found this. She reached her pocket and unfolded a thin square of paper. On it was a map of Palais, overlaying the outlines of the Grand Duchy, arrows, diagrams of tanks and battalions, and hastily scribbled instructions. Some of them were in my father's handwriting. Look at the date. 1949. Hmm. Intriguing. Why didn't my father tell me about this? Thought you'd inform Duke Reinhardt, I assume. This plan would have ended in a complete rout, at least in the military of the time. All glory to King Valero, but perhaps it's fortunate that he died before this could be carried out. He frowned. All the plan was scrapped when they realised it would never work. His dying wish was for me to take back the lands that were lost, but I'm no conqueror. An updated concept. Invading territories based on century-old grudges. Of course, my family would disagree. My province never got over losing our access to the sea. But I don't see any merit in taking back Palais, at least not for historic reasons. I trust your guidance to Jess. If there's a reason you think we should go to war with Palais again, I want to know. He looked away. I don't want to sound paranoid. But with Lesbia and ATO, and Morella becoming closer to Vogsland than the CSP, I do wonder whether our neighbour will get swallowed up in the superpower conflict. Hmm, that's a legitimate worry, and I think they and I think they will. I think they'll get tied up with Arcasia because you know they get supported by Lesbia before. Lesbia is now joining ATO, uh, I believe, or at least getting very close with Arcasia. So it, it wouldn't be surprising. It would also be in Arcasia's best interest anyway. Look what happened to Wella in the 1930s. Arcasia and United Contana nearly destroyed it by a proxy in a rush to gain access to its oil. And now Palais may be sitting on an even more valuable resource. Do you think we should conquer Palais for its own good? <laughs> conquer is an old fashioned word. Think of it as a chess game. Sometimes it's best to remove certain pieces from the board before it's too late. It doesn't mean I think we should attack Palais again. Using diplomacy to get them on our side would be a more effective tactic. And I do agree actually, I think diplomacy is far cheaper than war. It's war, you've got the lack of it. The economy shrinking, you're just sending lots of workers away, having to fund the war, having to face the repercussions from external threats or external other countries, like maybe embargoing you or not wanting to trade with you, or just battled around with diplomacy. We could win them back, some sort of deal, or like marrying off with them, and that'd be a very good choice. Mm. <laughs> I know that. I've been aiming for the diplomacy this entire time. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with number one, even though that's so false. <laughs> if we get into the dispute over the new gas field, it may be more difficult to stay the to stay the course. If you wanted me to, I could send a task force to Palais to monitor the situation more closely. I wouldn't even need extra funding. The expansion of the Golden Guard has created a few redundancies in our intelligence division. Yeah, that sounds wise. Do what you need to do. Obviously, it does take away a little bit from our Zile case, but Palais is gonna become a very important case. I actually think more important than Zile. A lot more important than Zillay, so yeah, let's do that. Thank you, Your Majesty. He began standing up. Hmm. Yeah, I appreciate you coming to me with all of this. Please feel free to express your unfettered opinions to me in future. And count on it. It's nearly four. Let me show you something. She gestured to the small to the stone wall behind us. A metal ladder led to the top of a small watchtower. Now the fortress's highest surviving structure. Lucita scaled it in a matter of seconds. Follow her. From this side, we could see Camp Thomas, the country's largest military training facility. It stretched far into the distance, with hundreds of barracks clustered around uh, grounds that sim simulated all types of terrain. 
We looked down onto the main square, a platoon of some 50 soldiers, mostly men, but a few women as well, preparing for an exercise. Listen closely. Drummer to the, to the side of the square beat out a complex driven on a snare. Long, short, short, long. That's an inverted wedge. Shoulders, the shoulders snapped into a V-shaped formation, narrow at the back and widening towards the front. Very impressive. Best trained soldiers in South Macopa. Another rhythm came from the drum, two rim shots, followed by a rapid roll. Extended line, spreading out into herringbone. Almost unconsciously, she started moving along with the soldiers, but as she put her left foot down, the section of the wall beneath it suddenly gave way. She began falling backwards. Do nothing! What? She just dies! What the fuck? <laughs> I grabbed her arm. I grabbed her arm and pulled her towards me to safety. She looked up at me in surprise, breathing heavily. Don't let go of her. Oh, what? I can't tell if she is she gonna drop to her death. Very strange. Nice reflexes, your majesty. From below, a camera clicked. A news photographer had managed to reach the base of the fortress and capture a picture of us. Lucita hurriedly stepped away from me, brushed herself off and turned to the guards. Now, who the hell let that happen? We were to find this photographer and prevent the publication of this picture at all costs. You heard her. I'm embarrassed at this obvious security lapse. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> the guards nodded. One of them sprinted off in the direction of the photographer. Honestly, what do we even pay the golden guard for? <laughs> to be continued, Duchess Azaro. She gave me a coy smile. I hope so, your majesty. The smile was still on her face as we left the fortress. Oh yeah! And that, guys, is the end of turn three. Oh, it's beautiful stuff, guys. It's beautiful stuff. Romance is bubbling all around. The economy is improving, I actually want to say. The economy is improving. But the Zillay tensions are getting even worse. Tensions with uh, the Sazon dynasty over here in Brennus and with the cousin uh, Raiko in Isa. Oh, it's all getting worse. We've got stuff in Pele going, oh, it's beautiful and it's scary and it's everything's happening. So before I wrap up, let's have a look. We've got the news article here. Solid enters economic recession despite efforts. That was not surprising, seeing we know about the first game. But we've got here orders, adequate foreign intelligence services. So now that we've actually gone to Palais, it's actually given us better intelligence services. Because it wasn't green, I don't think, before. So that's brilliant. We've got yellow now. Fantastic. Also got Gasfield Survey reaches completion. The region surveyor ship sent as uh, as ship sent to assess the boundaries of the uh, Orus gas fields have returned to Calakabiz and reported their findings. They've discovered that at least half of the field lies within a 200 kilometer radius of the island, giving Reacher a claim to it. Foreign Minister has contacted Palesian Duke Axel Reinhardt. It is expected a meeting will be arranged to discuss these findings and our country's next steps. That's big, guys. 200 kilometers of uh, Calakabiz, the island, but then also quite close to Palais. So that's going to be a lot of fun in the next turn. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end the episode there. Slightly shorter one this time, but we've got turn three. Uh, I think it's turn three or turn four completed. So, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this one. And if you've watched the end, thanks a million. If you did enjoy, please do give the video a like. And please do make sure to subscribe for more Kingdom of Eurasia Suits Rain content. Thanks a lot, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra.